What to do with the historic Covent Garden buildings? I don't think we have alleys this cool in Chicago. What's really good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to London. Today, we're in a district that was once a literal vegetable garden owned by a bunch of monks. In this film, we're gonna tell you the amazing story of Covent Garden, show you around the neighborhood, and stop for some great food and drink. But before we do any of that, you know what to do. Finesse that like button. Let's go ahead and get this film to over 1,000 likes so we can explore more neighborhoods of London and the UK. And now, let's explore Covent Garden. Covent Garden is located in the West End of London. It overlaps two official boroughs, Camden and the city of Westminster. Nearby districts include Soho, Bloomsbury, and Holborn. So how did Covent Garden get its name? Well, it's actually a corruption of Convent Garden, which is a reference to back in the day when monks used to grow vegetables on its land. To get to Covent Garden, take the Piccadilly line of the tube to the Covent Garden station, but just keep in mind it can get really busy on nights and weekends. So as an alternate, take the Piccadilly or Northern line to the Leicester Square station, which is about a five minute walk from here. Buses that serve the area include 9, 11, 15, 87, 91, 139, and 176. You know our first stop in Covent Garden had to be at a coffee shop. So we came to Monmouth Coffee, known as one of the best coffee roasters in all of London. And they do have multiple locations, but this is the original in Covent Garden right on Monmouth Street. You can buy the beans whole, you can get drinks to go, and they work with local bakeries to give you some of the best pastries that I've ever seen in my life. I'm hoping that the pastries taste as good as they look. We got a couple of coffees, of course, an iced oat latte and a filtered hot coffee. They no longer do paper cups for takeaway because it's really difficult to recycle those, but you can get the reusable cup for five pounds. You can use it at home, bring it back to Monmouth for future drinks, or just give it back and you'll get the five pounds refunded to you. Pretty sweet deal. By the way, this is a black coffee. You know how we do? Put it in the comments below. No cream, no sugar. When you drink black coffee, it starts to refine your palate. This is like 10 diamond award coffee. Not super hot. They don't serve it to you scalding. We just picked this up, stepped outside, and I can already drink it. Let's go. Poisson. That's the best one I've had in a long, long time. All the way back in the day, this land was the official property of the monks of Westminster Abbey. But in 1536, Henry VIII came along and said, give me that. This was part of his dissolution of the monasteries, a whole different story for an entirely different day. His son, Edward VI, gave the land to the first Earl of Bedford, John Russell, but it remained undeveloped land for many years until the fourth Earl of Bedford decided to build himself a little casa in the 1630s. He also called his buddy Inigo Jones, actually he was a royal architect, to build a square with houses for the wealthy and a church that would end up becoming St. Paul. Halls. This square was actually the first piazza in all of London. We made a stop to Percent Arabica. It's a super jumping coffee place. We waited in the queue for maybe like 20 minutes and we got a couple of iced lattes. I got the Kyoto latte, nice and refreshing because it's super hot today and the coffee is nice and strong. This is one of the best places to grab coffee in all of the West End of London. The first markets would open a couple of decades later, but in the early days, they more catered to the wealthy residents of the area. Then, two events took place that would indirectly affect Covent Garden, the Plague of 1665 and the Great London Fire of 1666. It's time for a delicious pastéis de nata at Santa Nata London. These are Portuguese pastries that combine croissant with creme brulee. The last time I had these, I was at Joey Bat's Cafe in the Lower East Side of New York City. So I can't wait to try these and compare and contrast. Delicioso. Louis was going on and on when he tried the pastéis de nata in New York. So I cannot wait to try this. It looks so buttery, flaky. So good. Greetings from London. I hope you're enjoying this film. We really appreciate when you hit that little red subscribe button. It helps our community to grow. We're bringing Latino and Asian voices to travel filmmaking, and we really appreciate you joining up at Gusto Nation. Even though this neighborhood missed the direct impact of the plague and the fire, other parts of London didn't. So all of a sudden, Covent Garden on the West End became one of the hottest destinations. But there were so many new residents that the rich people felt like Covent Garden wasn't quite as exclusive anymore, and thus they began moving to other parts of London. 
Neal's Yard is a tucked away alley in Covent Garden that takes its name from Thomas Neal. In the 70s, it was a rat infested, forgotten piece of London, but today it's a beautifully colorful small village that was revitalized by small businesses like Neal's Yard Dairy and Neal's Yard Remedies. You can grab food here, do some boutique shopping. There's a bank ski located nearby. Needless to say, it's a great place for visitors and photographers. And behind us, Monty Python once lived. Around the same time, a couple of theaters received letters patent from King Charles II, the First Theater Royal on Drury Lane, and the Royal Opera House. These were the only two theaters in all of London that could legally perform spoken drama. This made Covent Garden the theatrical center of London. But back in those days, theater wasn't quite as classy as it is today. Along with the performing arts came a thriving prostitution scene, and thus the area entered into a vicious cycle. Wealthy people moved out, and sketchy people moved in. Welcome to Frenchy Covent Garden. This is the first opening outside of France for Chef Greg Marchand. It's located right on Henrietta Street, and today we ordered off their a la carte menu, which is seasonal. Today we got a spring mix salad, a couple of different cheeses, one from Switzerland, one from France, signature bacon scones with a clotted cream, sourdough with salted butter. Just some light French bites, because we're on the go right now, exploring Covent Garden and having a wonderful day. It's beautiful weather outside with a little bit of French honey. This is a Revolution. The reason we ordered these two cheeses is because they're both unpasteurized. We can't get these type of cheeses in the U.S. Even though their menus are seasonal, they always have their signature bacon scone available. This place would be perfect for a casual lunch date. The late 18th century brought taverns, bookshops, coffee houses, and other less reputable establishments. Kind of like the theater, coffee houses were also very much different back in ye old day. In addition to grabbing coffee, you could have a spicy literary debate or perhaps meet up with an escort. The location of one of the oldest coffee houses in Covent Garden, Buttons, is now a Starbucks. The market kept growing. You could buy all types of ill-ish, like flowers, vegetables, and various other wares. It eventually outgrew the space and moved across the river to Nine Elms, but then, a new battle would begin. St. Paul's Churchyard is yet another tucked away area in Covent Garden, and as you might expect, it's behind the church, or maybe in front, depending on how you look at things. The front of the church actually doesn't have an entrance. You actually have to come to the church from the back. It sounds kind of weird, but that's just how it is. There's a special gate you have to walk through to get into this open yard where you can just chill, read, or maybe even eat a meal. After the market moved away, there was a long fight over what to do with the historic Covent Garden buildings. The community wanted preservation, but others, like the Greater London Council, wanted to demolish everything for luxury housing and offices. Both groups would end up having a compromise, and today you can visit the historic Covent Garden market buildings, as this has become one of the most popular areas of London with both tourists and lifelong Londoners. Peace and blessings.